film that I have been obsessed with for a, for a long time. Uh, and this is a cult film uh, that left a great deal of impression on uh, many viewers. So uh, I just begin with the concept of storytelling and then I'd move uh, forward. So if you could please. Uh, popular interpretations of the matrix. Uh, this is one of the primary concept in st uh, storytelling is that all great literature deals with the tension between appearance and reality. Regardless of the fact where that literature has been produced, uh, there would always be a degree of tension and a conflict between what appears to be and what actually is. Now, this, uh, when we look at the matrix, perhaps one of the most prominent interpretations of the matrix is that it is looked at as a visual reworking of uh, Plato's cave allegory where he says uh, that, you know, that it is a representation of uh, representation. So it is twice removed from reality. However, there is a difference between what uh, the argument that Plato uh, presents and what the way film engages with it. Now, uh, another important interpretation of uh, the matrix is, this is uh, matrix is the first time when I watched it, uh, I looked at it as a very Christian film. Uh, and there is, I mean, the, re the religious symbolism is so heavy that it is not easy to miss that. You can't just uh, escape that. Uh, for example, there is this one of the most repeated dialogue in the film is that you are the one. He is the one. Uh, this is the same construction that was used for Jesus Christ. And then there is this rep repetition of the idea of a savior uh, that is by uh, what they call Neo. Neo is the savior and this again is a concept and a dialogue that is uh, repeated more than once, uh, that is repeated again and again in the film. Now, uh, if we look at the name, the central character, Neo, it is an anagram of one, N-E-O-O-N-E. -O -O -E. So, he is the one that is that he is going to save and rescue humanity. Uh, again, a very Christian concept. Now, he is a Jesus Christ of the 21st century of the digital world uh, when it is not the same as it was in the time of, uh, you know, uh, Jesus Christ, the prophet, as we know. Now, another very important interpretation of the film is uh, its innovative and experimental style of engaging with cinematic techniques and the presentation of uh, it transformed uh, the, uh, the art of filmmaking in more than one ways. But uh, I will not be focusing on any of these. My focus will be more on the conflict between appearance and reality. Now, this conflict, uh, if we look at this, uh, we can look at different literatures. For example, this uh, verse by Mirza Ghalib, Hain uh, kawakib kuch nazar aate hain kuch dete hain dhokha. A very, uh, if I can uh, give a very simplistic explanation of the idea is that what is and what appears to be, these are two different concepts. And there would always be a degree of tension and a degree of conflict that, uh, and eventually that uh, generates and that causes all great literature. For example, if you look at the story of Oedipus, uh, he believes that if he runs away from Corinth, he would neither kill his father nor marry his mother. But in reality, he every step he takes away from those parents, actually he is taking closer to his real parents without knowing that. So there is this conflict there. And if we come down to this uh, uh, tradition of tragic drama, uh, the same goes for King Lear. King Lear believes that the two daughters who said all the good words and expressed their love for him, they are they really and actually love him, whereas Cordelia, the youngest one, and he misunderstands her uh, uh, emotional connection, uh, her emotional connection to himself. Now, this conflict continues to exist, and this does not exist on uh, merely on the level of literature, but uh, here, this is a line uh, by Karl Marx, and this concept, 
that all science would be superfluous if the form of appearance of things directly coincided with their essence. Now, what that means is that if we start believing that things are the way they appear to be, uh, the quest for knowledge stops there. So we have to go beyond the way things appear to be and that is what because there is a disconnect between the appearance and what a thing actually is. Now this is the dialogue that uh, Morpheus says, uh, uh, this is Morpheus dialogue and when he's talking to uh, Neo during their first meeting and he says, do you want to know what the matrix is? And then he starts explaining that the matrix is everywhere even in this room. And then he says that the matrix is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Now, that, that quite uh, clearly states that there is a world beyond the matrix. And they have to, uh, uh, Morpheus as a rebel or as a leader of the rebels, uh, they have to uh, reach they have to approach that world and let other people know about it. Now, uh, perception management, uh, how images, how uh, presentation uh, through film, how all these, uh, uh, all this media, how does it control our perception? By the way, this is an image that is used to, uh, for media studies, but I'm just using to, uh, uh, for my own purpose here, that is to, uh, that how, a specific image, how does a specific image uh, affect or our understanding of what is happening. When we look at this photo, uh, uh, this uh, picture, uh, that is that there is a man and he is going to be killed. Now there is uh, another way of presenting it, okay, that this is a man and he is uh, under stress or he is a captive, but still there is a kind soldier who is offering water to this man. And then this is the complete picture. So <clears throat> how can we break up things to construct reality and present it uh, to our own end? So a perception management and something similar is happening in the matrix. Uh, and we'll just uh, talk about that. Okay, now the opening, uh, the opening of the film is that there is a disembodied conversation that is taking place between two very important characters, uh, Trinity and Cypher. And when they are during their, uh, uh, this conversation, once Trinity says that this line is hacked and there is that specific beep that we hear, so we see that the, gre uh, the green neon code or the digital rain that fills our screen when we are looking at, uh, uh, at, the, at the film. Now, that green rain is uh, the code of the matrix that makes things as they are, they appear to be in the matrix. And these are all these characters are uh, computer hackers, they are computer programmers of, who have uh, a highly advanced level of skill and they are the ones who can break that code of the matrix and they can, uh, their, their job is or their aim is to help people, to pull people out of the matrix and free their mind. Now this is uh, the green rain uh, that fills the screen when that scene is, oh excuse me, at a later point Cypher says that I don't look at the code. For me, uh, this is a blonde, a brunette, uh, uh, a woman. So this is how all those images which are there in the matrix, they are presented like that. Uh, and one example that I can uh, give to you is uh, that all of us are familiar with uh, MS Word. So when we use it and we write our name that my name is so and so, to us it appears to be, uh, uh, I mean there are letters of alphabet. But for a computer programmer there is the machine language that projects it as an image and then you know uh, we as uh, as laymen or as uh, those people who are not familiar with that uh, the process of coding we look we read it as uh, letters of alphabet and uh, you know this is what cypher hints at later in the film now uh, the protagonist is neo uh, the role played by keanu reeves uh, his 
name in the matrix is Mr. Anderson. Uh, in he uh, goes by the uh, by the name of Neo as a hacker, and his he is quite disturbed by what he has uh, learned, and he has this. Uh, he has this uh, kind of, uh, there is a, this splinter that is in his mind that what appears to be that is not what uh, life is like. And because of that, he spends a lot of time uh, in, the, in the labyrinth of uh, this digital world. And there he came to, uh, he heard those references of the matrix again and again, and he wants to know what is uh, the matrix. Now, when he, uh, when he appears on the screen for the first time, he is uh, asleep on his desk and he's surrounded by uh, all the machines. And by the way, uh, here I'm just reminded of a verse by Joan Elia, Yehi rishton ka karkhana hai, ek machine aur uske paas machine. This idea of technological existence that dominates him that there is no human being in that room but he's surrounded by different monitors different computers telephones uh, all the technological tools are there but there is no other human being uh, now this technological uh, context that is provided to us it emphasizes that the world we are living in that is uh, overwhelmingly uh, controlled by sensory and informational cues which are being bombarded at us and this is uh, uh, and this has resulted in making people passive uh, one of the questions that you might have faced as well that you know these younger kids who are here they have become less uh, motivated they have become uh, less outgoing and this is the beginning of the impact of what uh, the matrix had been trying to drive home some 20 years ago now, this idea that when the matrix uh, was released in 1999, it all seemed to be a futuristic concept. Uh, it all seemed to be something, uh, something uh, in, in, in distant future, but now we are living in that world. Mm, now, uh, and in that world that we are living in, it is no more uh, possible, perhaps, to differentiate between uh, what is dream, what is uh, not real and what is real and by the way this is again uh, one of the most important motifs uh, you know which uh, recurs throughout uh, the story that the difference between dream and reality so when uh, Neo is uh, his head is on the desk where he was working and he has just fallen asleep there and then you know uh, he is sitting on a chair so this is neither a uh, completely um, a posture that uh, preferred posture to, to sleep. So he is in that in-between stage uh, where that he's neither fully awake nor fully uh, asleep. Now this is uh, the, the image that we see. And if you look at uh, his face, uh, there is uh, the light from the monitor, all the information that appears on the monitor that is being reflected on his face. Uh, I'm not too sure if because of these lights you are able to see that clearly or not, but there is this green uh, light which, uh, that, uh, that appear again and again uh, on his face. And this uh, shows us that human face is nothing but it has been reduced to a screen. And it only uh, reflects that information that is being projected on it by the computer screen. Now, uh, so it is not just Neo, all of us have become that screen, especially if you look at uh, those younger kids, uh, that if you take away a gadget from them, they have absolutely no idea what to do with their time uh, or what to do with their life, uh, so to say. So he is uh, that, you know, uh, so that is, uh, they are, they can, they just churn out, they just uh, uh, regurgitate that information that has been, uh, that, that has been instilled in their minds. Now, uh, this is a very important scene uh, for many reasons. Firstly, that uh, when Neo is asleep, there are some messages that appear on his monitor. So this tells us that there is a, a digital determinism in the world that we are living in. And how do we know that? Uh, because when 
he is not, there is nobody who is, uh, Neo is asleep, but the messages are coming from outside. They are not being generated by, or he's not even in a conversation. So somebody has already hacked his system, his computer, and they're throwing those messages on the screen. However, what's more important that happens is uh, that a message appears, knock, knock, and then suddenly uh, his, the door of his room is, uh, there is a knock at his door, and he is quite startled by that. Then a message appears, uh, follow the white rabbit. So when he uh, goes to uh, the door, uh, when he opens, answers that uh, knocking, and he sees that there are some of his clients who he sells all those uh, illegal discs, and there is this uh, young girl, uh, the, the man who is there to collect that, those uh, discs. There is this young girl who is his girlfriend, and there is a white rabbit tattooed on her, on her shoulder. So the message was, follow the white rabbit. So there is a knocking at the door, and then there is this message that follow the white rabbit. So there is somebody is there who knows everything that is happening. So it is all predetermined. So there is nothing, uh, nothing spontaneous. There is nothing that is out of the blue. Now, every aspect of that society is being controlled by, uh, by codes. Uh, by now, you know, it is being controlled by algorithms, uh, as we know, that uh, even, you know, because of this uh, uh, technological advancement, even if you say something, uh, talking to somebody, and your Facebook is running, uh, advertisements would start uh, changing after a few hours or, or so. So this is the kind of uh, society that we have here. Uh, now, this uh, power of uh, algorithms that has become much more pronounced and much more uh, uh, formidable uh, since uh, the, the release of, uh, uh, of the matrix. Now, there is nothing beyond appearances. Again, uh, I was, uh, as I said earlier, that this scene is very important when we meet Neo for the first time in the film. Uh, there is uh, that, why is that important? Because there, for the first time we hear uh, his client call him that you are my savior, my very personal Jesus Christ. So this is, uh, you know, this is the first time that we see that there is a connection, that this is a retelling of uh, uh, Jesus' story. Now, another important thing that happens is that Jean uh, Baudelaire, uh, he has hidden all those illegal discs in Jean Baudelaire's simulacra and simulation. But the book is hollowed out. So there is, uh, and the chapter that he opens is on nihilism. Actually, technically, this is the last chapter of the book, but apparently he opens it from the middle, and we see that this chapter appears in the middle. So there is a very uh, clear connection, and there is this uh, suggestion that there are no big ideas even in all these big books. And the chapter that he opens is that everything is, there is this very nihilistic notion uh, that we have here. Now, uh, this improvisation, so this is an improvisation on the part of uh, the directors that uh, th they have changed the position of the chapter as well as showing uh, that the book is hollowed out and all whatever is there is illegal, uh, dis uh, illegal material that he sells and he earns money uh, by that. Now, why is this important? Because uh, some of the, or at least three of the most important modernist uh, thinkers, uh, uh, Frederick Nietzsche, uh, uh, Freud, and Marx, all three of them were looking for something deeper, something beyond uh, that uh, was there in what they understood, that the, the underlying principle of human life and human society. Uh, for Nietzsche, uh, it was uh, the will to power. For Freud, it was the unconscious. And for uh, Marx, it was uh, uh, the economic conditions. Now, this is uh, the image that we see, uh, that there is this book, uh, Simulation and Simulacra. And when he opens it, he places the money on the chapter that says uh, on nihilism. And then he, on the other side, is a hollow box, and he takes out those discs from uh, there. Now, what is the matrix? Uh, the matrix is a simulation that keeps minds alive and harvests bodies to produce energy for the machines. Now, if we look at uh, this, uh, or if we uh, if we look at 
the, uh, this idea that human beings in general, uh, for example, what has happened to the education system uh, in the wake of uh, this wave of neoliberalism, that all educational universe, uh, institutions have been reduced to uh, the production centers of laborers. There is no connection between knowledge. So universities or educational institutions are no more seats of learning, but they are just like, you know, uh, uh, they, they function like, uh, like a machine or a factory that produces, uh, you know, uh, laborers. Now, uh, and this, why? Because our bodies are needed to make the engine of a neoliberal economy or the capitalist economy work. This idea that, you know, uh, and our minds have to be engaged and they have to be kept alive through meaningless uh, occupations. Now, in this uh, state of simulation, the matrix is a simulated world. And in that uh, state of uh, simulation, everything stim uh, simulates something else. This we see when Morpheus tells uh, Neo that human beings have been reduced to batteries, that they are the ones which produce energy uh, for the machines to survive. And the machines had learned uh, as a result of a great advancement in uh, the field of artificial intelligence, the machines had learned that if they use human beings as uh, a source of energy, and they harvest them uh, in the fields, they, they would have uh, energy for ev eternally. So they wouldn't be dependent on anything else. And there are only few human beings who have uh, been freed from this, uh, uh, this, uh, this condition of being a source of energy for the machines. Now, a very uh, a significant Marxist, Marxist idea is that he called that Money is the universal uh, equivalent that can be used to compare the exchange value of completely different items. Now, in the world that we are living in, uh, the code has become that universal, uh, uh, th th that universal equivalent. That a code that when we say that everything can be stimulated, uh, uh, simulated and everything does simulate something else, there, the code has become, uh, has replaced uh, the concept of uh, money. And nothing can escape uh, the code, the system of signs. And uh, this goes uh, without saying, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, everything that we do, we think that we are using uh, the machines, but more often than not, uh, it is the machines that are using us. For example, uh, our mobile phones. Uh, how many people can really survive without them uh, in, in, in today's world? Now, uh, there is this uh, great uh, blurring line, uh, there, the line between dream reality and uh, simulation is completely blurred in the film. Uh, and one example that I can, uh, I can think of on top of my head is that when uh, children are playing uh, these video games or when they are using these uh, VR glasses and the character in the game dies, very often, uh, regardless of, again, uh, across different cultures and languages, uh, what kids say, they say that I am dead. So the difference, uh, the line between the character and the child as an individual is completely uh, blurred. And that is, uh, there is uh, this example that I'll uh, come to that in a minute. Uh, and this line is uh, quite evident when we see Neo for the first time. And there is this uh, symbolic relationship uh, between the idea of uh, dream and reality. Morpheus, uh, the Greek god of dreams, and Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you know, that uh, he himself, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, is also related with the idea of the dream because he had uh, a dream and he did not know what it means and he is curious to know, uh, to find out the meaning of that dream. Now, this uh, uh, idea, and this is something similar, uh, this is something that, Neo shares with Nebuchadnezzar. And by the way, Nebuchadnezzar is the name of the vessel on which real uh, human beings are living, led by uh, Morpheus. So there is this dream and they are uh, looking or they are, you know, searching for the meaning of that dream. Now, uh, when Neo is uh, selling those illegal discs and his client says that everything okay with you, uh, you don't seem 
uh, all right. And he says uh, that, have you ever had that feeling where you are not sure if you are awake or dreaming? So this is uh, the condition of being, uh, of, uh, as, as a character, he is in between that state of knowing what is, whether he's dreaming or, you know, whether what uh, he is seeing is real or he is in that uh, state. And now his, uh, another important thing uh, that happens is that when uh, agents, uh, the computer generated uh, guardians of the matrix, they get him and they want him to work for them and lead them to Morpheus, uh, lead, uh, lead them uh, to Morpheus. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Neo refuses to do that. So then they uh, use that computer program and he is unable to speak and they inject uh, a tracer in his body. And uh, when, when he meets Morpheus, Trinity takes out that tracer and he says, uh, Jesus Christ, that thing is real because he believed that what had happened to him, that had happened in a dream. So the concept or the relationship between uh, dream and actual life, that is uh, completely gone. Now, Morpheus in their first meeting says that you have the look of a man who accepts what he sees. Uh, this is again a notion of the same idea that Hankava uh, Kepkuch, Nazar Aate Hain Kuch, that do not believe, appearances can be deceptive, so do not believe in everything that you, uh, that you see. Because he is accept, uh, expecting to wake up. So he himself, or, or what he is telling Neo, that you don't know whether you have woken up or you are still asleep. Now this uh, cipher, uh, cipher is uh, the character who uh, we uh, uh, who speaks uh, the first lines of the film. So he is uh, the snitch. He is the one who gives up uh, Morpheus and all those rebels, and he has a connection with the with the with the agents. And now he is having a meeting with the agent, and he says that uh, I know this stake does not exist. Uh, and but then you know, and this is uh, by the way. Uh, even the first time I had watched it, I knew that this is what we are eating. I mean, how many of us have actually seen uh, an actual chicken uh, uh, or have even, and even if we try to eat it, we might not, you know, find it very palatable. So the world has already been transformed uh, in this. And he uh, talks about this, that I know that this is not real and still he wants to eat it. Okay. Uh, simulation controls perception. Uh, video games, simulation missions for soldiers, virtual VR glasses, and social media. Uh, our perception is uh, totally under uh, the control of these, uh, uh, this new media. Now, uh, this is a, a real uh, story that the American pilots, when they were uh, going for their missions, uh, bombardment mission, bombing missions, during the Gulf War, uh, they were completely detached from what they were doing. And why was that happening? Because they had done similar missions uh, countless times through those simulation programs. And this, uh, those of you who are familiar with Snowden, uh, there is this idea that they are sitting in Washington, but they launch an attack on a hideout of, uh, uh, of terrorists, and uh, they attack that. And they are talking to, uh, to each other as if they are playing a game. So how many people are dead? So, oh, these four, five bodies have just flown up. So this kind of conversation, uh, this tells us uh, that, you know, uh, for example, killing somebody with your own hands, that would mean something different. But killing somebody and believing that this is just a simulation program, that will have a completely different impact on, on us. And this is what had happened during the Gulf War and all the wars uh, that followed it. And... Pentagon had named those troopers or those soldiers as Nintendo soldiers. And Nintendo is that, you know, uh, simulation game uh, that is. So uh, this is what their nickname was. Uh, the distinction between the simulated and the real is destroyed. When meeting, for example, uh, when we talk about social media, 
Uh, we know that there are people who spend a lot more time on constructing an image for themselves uh, through social media than they you know, work on themselves actually. Uh, for example, through Twitter, through Insta, through uh, Facebook, through all these different uh, platforms. Uh, one example is, you know, uh, uh, one example is, uh, that is a little later, but I'll just share it with you now. Uh, when uh, Pervez Musharraf, I think almost a decade go ago when he came back to Pakistan and he said that he was the most popular uh, leader of Pakistan and he said that on the basis of his following on uh, Facebook and on other uh, social media platforms and when he landed in Karachi, people say that there were not more than 300 people. So, uh, you know, that this is uh, how it can uh, affect people and how, how it can control uh, people's perception. Now, our life is uh, saturated with images and copies without their originals. Uh, and this is one of the, uh, one of the uh, most important concepts that we have uh, in relation to uh, simulation. Now, uh, the very notion of authenticity itself becomes a, 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 a part of that simulated reality that is being, uh, you know, uh, thrown at us. Now, uh, advertisers, politicians, and celebrities uh, make themselves more appealing through this uh, uh, concept of uh, simulation. Uh, this can be applied to many uh, political figures, uh, many uh, advertisers, uh, many, uh, you know, uh, celebrities. Uh, and this is that we start confusing that what is real and what is uh, simulated. Uh, this was the example that I shared with you earlier. For example, I mean, you know, Pervez Musharraf believed that he was the most popular political leader of Pakistan. But when he, you know, was face to face with reality, it was quite different from what he had perceived himself to be. Uh, now, uh, this again is a very important idea that when we look at uh, the matrix, we see that uh, Baudelaire's uh, argument is that it is the triumph of the object over the subject. And this is a reversal of uh, the Cartesian principle uh, that I think, therefore, I am. That means that subject was able to comprehend uh, an object. His ability, uh, a subject's ability to understand uh, reality. And this, uh, according to uh, Descartes, the subject had the agents, agency to use reason and to understand uh, the world around him or her. Uh, now, in, with the advancement in technology, the subject has become a victim and the object has become a more powerful entity. Uh, and that, that has become because the, uh, the objects have started controlling the subject. And uh, those forces which control the subject, uh, they are uh, unmanageable, or at least this is what uh, the neoliberalists would claim, uh, and uh, incomprehensible forces from global markets to uh, viral media content to climate change. So hum uh, human beings as um, autonomous uh, subjects, they have become uh, quite helpless uh, in the face of this uh, rising power of of, of, of the machines. Now, uh, Morpheus explained this uh, in the scene when he informs uh, Neo about uh, the matrix. And he says that, you know, the real world is just an apocalyptic wasteland. And he uh, makes a statement which is directly from uh, Baudelaire's uh, book that uh, welcome to the desert of the real. So uh, all resources are uh, uh, the, the, the entire uh, world of nature has been consumed or is being consumed by the machines and they are uh, controlling uh, everything. Uh, thank you very much. So I will conclude my talk here. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for such an informative talk. Uh, I think uh, when I looked at the title, I was actually thinking of... Uh, the phenomenologists, uh, rather than Karl Marx or uh, Nietzsche. I think I was thinking of uh, Sather, I was thinking of Monte, and uh, because his book, Phenomenology of Perception, actually is more relevant. 
And if you look at it from that point of view, uh, they talk about the embodied uh, perception, embodied experience. Uh, whereas this digital and simulated world uh, is not embodied. Uh, embodied simulation actually uh, is what I think determines reality because otherwise it's very difficult to say how reality is encoded. Uh, okay, nowadays it is encoded in, in the form of uh, matrices. But, uh, as you said, it could be encoded in words, it could be encoded in images, everything that we see could actually be simulated and as people say that we are living in a simulation already. Uh, maybe this is a simulated world, what we call reality. Uh, s but, but what differentiates it from all other sorts of uh, simulated or real worlds is our embodied experience. Um, and I think that that's something which I found uh, missing. Otherwise, uh, it was wonderful. Uh, and uh, after Matrix, I think there are so many other movies that uh, like Inception and uh, I, I have interest in dreams and this simulation and consciousness and memory and all these things. So uh, for me, it was really very interesting well, to you. listen to your talk. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is uh, an interesting question. Uh, I think that uh, when we talk about SAF or when we talk about uh, 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 Mon uh, Marlo Monty, yeah, so... Uh, they were very practical people. And as you have yourself said that they believed in an embodied idea of perception or experience. But I think uh, when I look at this film, I look at it more uh, as a disembodied existence. And this is what uh, I think Baudelaire's uh, argument is. And this is what, on the, on the, on the basis of that point, uh, he had criticized the film uh, when somebody asked him uh, that, do you think that this film represents your ideas? Uh, and his, uh, his, his argument was uh, what effectively uh, uh, you have said, that in the film you can differentiate between simulation and reality. And that is why Neo uh, goes from uh, the simulated world to the real world. Whereas Baudelaire's argument was that it is not possible to differentiate between uh, simulation and reality. And I can uh, give you an example. If you look at the political scene uh, uh, around the world, uh, those people, all, all the, I've been mean, starting from that Brazilian um, uh, uh, political leader to, you know, American uh, political leadership and then uh, Indian and then Pakistani leadership. I mean, uh, they, on the ground, they, they, their popularity might not exist. But uh, in, in the digital arena, they are the most popular pe people. And that does influence uh, our perception. Uh, uh, and the way people look at those uh, political figures. So I think that, uh, yes, Sartre and uh, 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 Marlo Ponti are important in their own ways, but I think uh, it, a more relevant uh, theory for me is, at least uh, that is uh, Baudelaire's uh, ideas, that you know, it's not possible to differentiate between uh, uh, what is simulated and what is real. So, yeah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Um, I just came up with the juxtaposition. Uh, you mentioned Matrix, right? So uh, can you like compare it with uh, like you talked about the real and uh, the, the different world of technology. So can you like induce the Lacanian triad into it? Like that's what Jizek tried, uh, tried to do like five years ago when he released a paper basically saying that uh, technology or social media per se is uh, kind of uh, we can like easily compare it to the Lacanian mirror stage. For example, likes or uh, reactions under a social media post are just authorizations that uh, sort of ratify its uh, jubilant uh, assumption, uh, which, uh, which can be directly linked to the mirror stage that Freud mentioned like a century ago. So can you just uh, give shed a little light on uh, the triad if, if possible? with uh, this film? No, I think that, that that's a very perceptive uh, remark that you have just made. Uh, yes, uh, we can look at it uh, like that. However, uh, the idea of the real for different uh, uh, thinkers is not the same. For example, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for Marx, real was uh, uh, 
real was the material world. Uh, for Freud, the real was uh, the unconscious. Whereas for Lacan, the real is that cannot be uh, encapsulated uh, through symbols. So uh, when we look at, if you want me to, uh, if, if your question is, uh, which I, 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 I would like to think that I have understood it correctly, but if you want to, uh, want me to comment on a Lacanian concept of that, I think that is very close because, uh, but uh, there is a little caveat uh, about that and the caveat is uh, that when we look at uh, the middle stage in uh, Lacanian theory, at that point, this is the point when you know uh, a child's growth begins and eventually he has to rise, uh, he has to move beyond that. That is why it is a stage, otherwise it would have been something permanent where he would have been uh, stuck forever and ever. Uh, there are some people who are stuck in that. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, uh, I can give you the name of a political leader uh, in Pakistan. Uh, sorry, j j uh, yeah, just let, let me conclude this, uh, that he is, uh, he is talking about the middle stage that a child s realizes that, uh, that he is not, con no more connected uh, with his or her mother's body. So that is, he, uh, a child sees itself as, as, uh, as, uh, as a separate being without being totally in control of his or her movement. And this is what stays with that child. And then the child is fascinated by, uh, uh, by its image. Now, when we compare it, uh, when we try to look at the matrix through that lens, I think there is something, uh, 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 the, a dangerous caveat, and the dangerous caveat is that the film is not talking about an early stage uh, in, uh, in human evolution. It is talking about the ultimate stage of, and that makes it far more dangerous because we know that a child would grow out of it, might not grow out of it, but there is a possibility that the child would grow out of that uh, domination of the middle stage and then you know there would be uh, some sort of progress but here we see that perhaps this is the final stage and after that there is nothing but uh, a dystopian future so this is what so I, I, I hope I have answered your question yeah um, hello sir what can be the easy definition of reality and dream no I mean uh, as I have said I mean I looked at it from uh, the way it has been in the film uh, I don't think uh, I am, uh, this is my place to comment on what is reality and what is a dream uh, because uh, there have been, you know, uh, uh, all those great philosophers who have taken this up. But I don't think uh, that this is, you know, really my place to comment on that. And, you know, my reality might not be yours or anybody else. And what I consider a dream might not be, you know, that. And I, I think these are far bigger questions uh, than, than to be taken up or than to be, you know, uh, 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 in, in, but whatever I said about reality and uh, dreams, that is in relation to the film. And that is, uh, I, don't sub I may not necessarily subscribe to the definitions, you know, which are there in the film or the way they have been presented. But I was just, you know, offering an analysis of, of that. So, yeah, I'm sorry if I, I wish I could, you know, <laughs> answer it differently. Are going live on the Black Holes Facebook page, there are uh, many online viewers तो हमारे जो online दोस्त हैं उनके कुछ questions हैं वो मैं आप क्या के रखता हूँ अमाद खान है वो पूछ रहे हैं कि what is your view about the argument that our entire universe is just a simulation and all this is not real even we are not real if real is something we can touch smell and hear uh, then these are just electrical signals interpreted by our brain okay yeah this is what how Morpheus explains it uh, that this is, if, if this is what real is, but again, uh, as a literature person, I would again like to quote uh, John Elia that uh, if I remember that verse correctly, ye jo vajood hai, kya ho, jo ye adam nikle, something like this. So it, it could be, again, uh, that I, I, I don't know, uh, because I'm, I'm afraid I can't really answer uh, a question. These are like, uh, that is why the world had so many prophets, I would say, that they were the ones who should have. So I, I don't think that this is my place to define reality and uh, uh, reality or, you know, what is not real. Uh, and if you look at it from a religious world, uh, I can give you that example. And this is related to this film as well. Uh, when, uh, uh, if we look at the matrix as a retelling of uh, Christ's story, uh, in the in, in the 21st century, uh, and Neo is uh, the the, the postmodernist Christ. 
then there is a very strong Christian idea uh, that is related to what Plato had said. And then, you know, it was uh, taken up by other religions as well. Uh, the idea is that when uh, uh, Jesus said that I am the king of the world or, you know, uh, so Romans uh, put uh, that, uh, that crown of uh, thorns over his head and they started mocking him and they asked him, so now you are the king of this world. And Jesus replied that my kingdom is beyond this world. So in terms of Christianity, yes, the answer is uh, what this question is that, you know, all of us are unreal or perhaps, you know, the life that we are living is very much like a dream. But again, uh, I would like to reiterate and emphasize this point uh, that, you know, uh, th this is not my place to, you know, comment on these co concepts like these. Uh, I can have my personal views, certainly, but uh, not, you know, uh, it cannot, I, I would rather not go into an overgeneralized uh, uh, concept, uh, 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 overgeneralizing a concept. हमारे साथ हैं अब्दुल माजिद खान नाइस टू सी यू सर सादिया वान है अच्छा जी इसके अलावा है हमारे साथ लियो मलिक सुल्तान और अब्दुल माजिद खान सजाद महमूद उनका क्वेश्चन है वो कह रहे हैं कि हाउ इज ऑगोमेंटेड रियलिटी ऑफ मेटावर्स अ काइंड ऑफ मैट्रिक्स दिस इज दिस इज वेरी मच इन इट्स इनिशियल स्टेजेस एंड दिस इज एट लीस्ट दिस इज वॉट Mark Zuckerberg claims that this is what the world would be like. So if uh, we are, I don't know, fortunate or unfortunate enough to see uh, the, the realization of the metaverse, that would be undisputedly uh, the world that has been presented here. So that would be pretty much uh, uh, the matrix that we would be living in. Uh, but still it is in its initial stages and uh, let, let's follow it and see you know, uh, what the future holds. सजाद महमूद वो पूछ रहे हैं कि हाउ डू यू सी दी मैट्रिक्स रिजरक्शंस दैट इज मैट्रिक्स फॉर एज टू हाउ इट प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लमिटाइज द रियल मुझे इतना समझ नहीं आया सवाल मे बी आपने किया मैंने देखी नहीं है मैट्रिक्स फॉर बाय द वे वेल दैट इज अगेन दिस इज समथिंग स्ट्रिक्टली पर्सनल बट आई लुक एट द ट्रिलजी द लास्ट टू पार्ट ऑफ द ट्रिलजी Uh, very much as a commercial stunt uh, because i don't uh, see any thematic depth or uh, any uh, any of those things or uh, the uh, uh, the possibility of multiple interpretations that we have here uh, in in the matrix so uh, in the in the following part this is more like uh, uh, an, an effort to build on the success of uh, part 1 how does how does the character of morpheus in the matrix represent the role of a perception manager by the way it is very interesting for myself ke morpheus jo hai wo uh, roman mythology mein god of sleep and dreams hai ya personification of sleep haan ji to unhone naam jo inke jo bhi play writer unhone bahut acha script banaya aur acche characters ke naam rakhe Uh, so uh, is this a question that you know uh, or it was just a comment agar koi aap is pe koi kai cheeze aap cover kar chuke hain guftugu mein ye jo sawal hain ye actually saath saath aa rahe hote hain baaz waqt cover ho jati hain lekin unki numayandagi bara zaruri hai this is last question online yahan hazreen mein se agar aur kare to phir guftugu achhi chalegi aake wo keh rahe hain ke what lessons can be learned uh, from this movie about the dangers of perception management and its potential impact on uh, individual freedom and liberties but i mean uh well, that's again a very good question yes there are like uh if we look at it as a tool of political uh to to gain a political control yes it is uh it can be dangerous and we have seen it happen in many parts of the world uh you know uh and this and this is uh reflected uh in the uh, the policies which particularly the us has about it uh, educational institutions the way uh, the study of humanities is being eroded uh there are you know entire departments which are being closed uh you know enrollment in courses uh, hum uh, related to humanities have gone drastically down so uh i i i mean uh I can't uh, predict the future but it doesn't bode very well for uh, the future uh, because looking at uh, life or the world from a singular or one uh, perspective 
uh, that in itself is a very dangerous uh, approach. Uh, and that is, in fact, us uh, living in that state of denial where we uh, do not want to admit that life is far more complex and uh, far, more, uh, far more diverse. Thank you very much for this wonderful uh, presentation. I have two questions. One is uh, how different this movie you found with some other similar movies which deal with the same, uh, uh, same challenge, I should say. Uh, so th because this is not a new topic. Uh, other movies have, I, I can just uh, quickly give names of a couple of movies that immediately come to my mind right from 1940s. For example, there was a movie Spellbound. Uh, with Gregory Peck, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's movie, that also dealt with the same, you know, uh, with Salvador Dali, surrealist uh, approach of reality and perception. Uh, a couple of French movies like Belle de Jour and um, uh, Last Year at Marion Bad. Uh, in Hollywood, there was John Mal uh, being John Malkovich, yeah. also deals with the same. So my question is, how different you found this movie with some of the other movies that I just quoted or any other that you that come to your mind? Because I, I think that this is just same, uh, dealing with the same topic. This is number one. Second question is that this uh, dystopian uh, view that we people uh, have who are in, uh, in 50s and 60s, uh, that, you know, young generation has become passive and they are too much influenced by, by what they see, I mean, my father is 91, and he tells me that when he was in Bombay and when he started watching uh, cinema, his parents used to say that, you know, you are watching too many movies and you will be influenced by those movies. Then he, when he was in his 50s, he was telling us that I was reading too many digests, you know, and I, will, I was getting uh, influenced by digests and the TV was very new, so I was getting influenced by TV. And now we are complaining the same thing uh, about our children getting too much influenced by uh, this. So don't you think that this is a bit too dystopian view uh, of reality? You know, uh, the world changes. So probably people like you and me who keep complaining, uh, probably we are not keeping pace with the changing world. Uh, how do you look? So these are two questions. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nasib. Uh, responding to your first question, uh, what I find uh, fascinating and intriguing about uh, The Matrix is the idea of uh, use of coding and uh, the emphasis that it puts on that, that how algorithms can control human beings. And uh, now, as you said, that we, as we grow older, we do become uh, pessimistic and dystopian in a way. Perhaps that could be a very uh, cynical view of the world, but as I am growing older, I believe that algorithms have a lot to do with what we are doing and the way uh, the world is being run at the moment. Uh, secondly, this idea, uh, responding to your second question, that uh, the world, uh, I think, yes, uh, there is this generational conflict that you know older people have with uh, the younger generation and uh, their understanding of reality does collide. Uh, however, uh, the way the complaints that we have or I have with, uh, with the future of the world is, uh, for example, I can uh, share this example with you that uh, Canadian government, they have their next 20 years projects. And one of the projects is uh, life in an asocial world. So, uh, if they are spending so much money on it, and this is one of their core areas of research over the next 20 years, so we are heading towards a society where there, there will be no social contact. Uh, if I can share uh, an experience with you, uh, recently, uh, I, couple of, uh, one last week, I was uh, in my village um, uh, near Okada, and uh, I, knocked, I had to see some family members and some friends. So when I knocked at the door, uh, a young kid of eight or ten, he he just uh, came out and he started talking to me that who are you and why are you here? Who do you? And you know it was very much like a banter, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, can a can a child uh, who sees an iPad at the age of two can a child talk to a stranger like that? Uh, I doubt that. Uh, I doubt that on the basis of my experience. All those, these children, they are unable to talk to uh, human beings. Uh, that is uh, something. So that is why, uh, yes, I would agree with you uh, on this part that, yes, there are generational conflicts which have been going on since time immemorial. 
and uh, they, there are, you know, uh, and when we grow older, all those things that we cannot do or cannot, you know, relate to, we start complaining about those things. Yes, that, uh, that part I agree with. But uh, I think that uh, there is, the world is going to change uh, in, in a very, uh, uh, in, 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 a, in a major way, the way we understand that. Uh, so uh, why would, and uh, I, I believe that I don't follow what, uh, what are the, you know, futuristic uh, agenda of uh, the, the American government, but I believe it wouldn't be much different from what the Canadians are doing. So if they are, they have already started looking at the ideas of a social, uh, uh, that life in an asocial society, so that 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 I think that is a cause of concern for me. So I, I don't know how would you respond to it, but I I don't I don't look at it in a very healthy way. Perhaps I don't know how would I live in an asocial world. That could be a reason. My children might know that, and they might be quite comfortable with that. So that 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 far it is uh, I would agree, but I think that it's not uh, uh, beyond that. There are some you know serious uh, reasons to be concerned about the future so yeah. I, I hope i have uh, answered your question yeah thank you uh, thank you for a nice lecture sir i would like to ask one question that uh, apparently we see some nations in the world who are existing in 21st century but probably uh, mentally they are living centuries ago somewhere are they also in some kind of matrix <laughs> uh, well, uh, do you want to add to this or? Okay, course, yeah. okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would like to look at uh, this that, you know, uh, progress or the concept of development uh, cannot be imposed or cannot be superimposed. Uh, for me, uh, any society that uh, is making sense of its surroundings, uh, I, I get the drift where, where your question is uh, directed towards. And I'll try to, uh, you know, engage with that. But uh, responding to this idea of like there are certain nations which are technologically far advanced, and then you know there are certain nations. So which one is in the matrix? If I, I believe this is what you're trying to get at, that if like let's say if we compare the U.S. and Bhutan, or you know which one is in the matrix? Is is this the question? Is yeah. Okay, so I mean, uh, I I would I would like to think that it's not uh, uh, when we s uh, say that this is an underdeveloped nation or this is an underdeveloped society that is uh, speaking from a very privileged position, and that privileged position comes with the with the idea of power. Uh, for example, uh, the kind of uh, destruction uh, in in February uh, in February uh, by by February seventeenth or twenty first. Uh, there had been more than 500 gun uh, attacks in U.S. schools. That is more than the days in a year. So uh, if this is what development means, uh, then I have my serious reservations about that. Uh, yes, they can say that they are developed because they are speaking from a position of power. Uh, you know, when I have an accident with my car, I will start speaking from a position of power. I am speaking from a position of power. So if we believe that this is what development should mean, or this, is, this should be the relationship between or I have the I have the agency, or I have the authority, or I have the power to determine that who is developed and who is not developed, and I should shove it, shove development down people's throat. Then actually, you know, uh, I don't see it something. Uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't say that that is like being living in, a, in the matrix. Perhaps uh, a developed nations are far more uh, in the living in the matrix than those nations or those societies which we tag as underdeveloped or, or uh, primitive. Sorry to use this word, but you know, this is how they, how they uh, define it. Uh, every society has its own norms, and very often, very often, not always, but very often, they are pretty much, you know, uh, uh, they understand about their society a lot better than we do. For example, if in certain parts of Pakistan, and I go uh, and tell them that you are not developed people, so I'm May Islamabad se bold on, मैं इस्लामाबाद की सेंसिबिलिटी से बात कर रहा हूं उनसे कि ये पेंडू है तो ये तो फलाना है तो ये तो फलाना है तो वो मैं उस पोजीशन ऑफ पावर से और आह यू नो वन वे और दी अदर ऑल ऑफ़ अस ट्वीन दैट सो या आई आई होप दैट यू नो दिस एड्रेसेस एड्रेसेस दैट एस यू मेंशन्ड ओवरवेलमिंग प्रेजेंस और एक्सपेंशन � 
uh, I, I can imagine something uh, previously uh, historically uh, the people traversing with with of course limited and qualified agency between the real and imaginary mythical uh, those words were also those imaginary and mythical words were also designed and driven by certain individuals or groups as well and people have been you know moving in between or uh, overwhelmingly on either side of you know the material and imaginary and mythical words uh, do, do you see any i mean i, I did not see uh, the possibility of you know the real the possibility of traversing continuously traversing between these two uh, wriggling uh, through these two uh, uh, words uh, are the possibility of resistances to this di digital determinism. Thank you very much, Fatbi. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I don't know about uh, the resistance uh, because I believe that, uh, or the way I look at things, uh, that there is a very systematic uh, erosion of uh, all political systems uh, that is, uh, you know, very aggressively underway. Uh, and as that is happening, so I, 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 I don't know about uh, the idea of the resistance, but uh, what the, the earlier part of your question that, you know, even these are the things that have been going on for, for a long, long time, and people used to uh, move beyond uh, the mythical or what they call religious and or spiritual and the physical. Uh, I, I, I do not uh, compare that understanding with this idea of digital determinism. Uh, and for the sole reason, because in when we talk about a spiritual understanding of something or, uh, you know, this relationship with the mythical, uh, there is always a possibility of interpretation. There is always a possibility of newer meaning. There is always a possibility of individual connection. But when we talk about this, uh, this domination of algorithms, uh, the idea of literalism emerges very, very strongly. For example, uh, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. doesn't matter which part of the world you uh, go to, uh, which uh, culture you go to, 2 plus 2 would always remain 4. But 2 brothers plus 2 brothers are not equal to, are not necessarily equal to 4 brothers, if you see what I'm trying to uh, say. Uh, 2 brothers plus 2 brothers could be, are not necessarily 4 brothers, they could be rivals, uh, they could be enemies. Uh, one could sacrifice his or her, you know, his life for another brother. So this possibility of uh, of different shades of human experience uh, that is under threat. Uh, this is what uh, my point was, or this is what uh, I said about the idea of digital determinism. Uh, so we the the the, the uh, this uh, concept of making or creating a, a perfect subject is. Uh, is perhaps the ultimate goal. Uh, I mean, uh, one example, I, co I teach one of the courses about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the relationship between literature and uh, health sciences. And so I was working on this uh, ADHD, the phenomena of ADHD, and I had to uh, look at. And if you look at all the characteristics of ADHD uh, and the treatment that is given to that, that is to tame a child. Uh, so, what are the main uh, characteristics of ADHD? Uh, a child who doesn't listen to his or her elders, a child who is rebellious, who is argumentative, uh, who is unconventional, who is, uh, who is not. These are all the qualities which you, and you know, Americans say that almost 80% American children suffer from ADHD. So, what kind of future do we have? So, this is what my concern was. So, after this, uh, this, uh, creation of a perfect subject, uh, I believe that the possibility of, uh, of uh, interpretation that would be a threat. So this was my point. So. I have um, a comment regarding what you said earlier about developed societies. And I find it slightly problematic that you mentioned the uh, gun violence in the U.S. Now, there are a lot of developed societies where this does not happen, and this is a particularly U.S.-related phenomenon because of their gun laws or the lack thereof. So, uh, conflating that 
that with the level of development is uh, problematic, I think. Okay. I mean, I would define development uh, as a, de a developed society as one where human beings are free to realize their maximum potential, as opposed to oppressed societies, which are always underdeveloped. Um, so that was yeah. just my comment. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. But I would like to respond to it, certainly. Uh, I don't have a problem with the concept of gun violence and development. I have the problem with the concept of development itself. That is the binary and through which you acquire a domination over others. For example, uh, if I, uh, there is this very famous story uh, that all of us would be familiar with, that there was this man who was fishing along a lake, uh, and he was, you know, uh, he was an angler, and uh, and as suddenly another man came, and he said that, you know, how many fish uh, do you catch? This is a very long story. I'll try to cut it as short as I can. And he said that I, I fish for two hours, and I catch one fish a day or two fish a day. One I sell, and the other I take home. And the man started advising him that, why don't you, you know, do this? do this and then you will have a lot of money and the man kept asking, the fisherman kept asking him what would be the end result and he said that you know you will have more money, you will have a boat, you will be able to fish uh, you know, deeper in the lake and you will catch more fish and then you will be able to hire people and it goes on and on and on and eventually the man says that you will own a huge yacht and uh, the fisherman said then what would I do and he said that you can relax by you know you can lie down by the bank of a lake and you can relax and the fisherman said what am I doing now so I mean I, I have a very uh, with all due respect I have a problem with the concept of development itself uh, a person uh, living in the village uh, what gives uh, this is a very enlightenment concept that I should preach Christianity this is my job to civilize the world uh, I mean that in itself is a quite problematic concept to tell anybody that this is a developed society or this is an undeveloped society. So I don't have a problem with the concept of gun violence or development. I have uh, I have my issues with the concept of uh, development. Uh, if you speak English or French or what, what proves you that you are more educated than those people who speak, let's say, Brahvi or Punjabi or Saraiki or whatever language. Uh, but do they have the same agency as an English speaker has? You know, so this this relationship, I am talking about that relationship, not specifically about uh, the relationship between gun violence and development. So, yeah. Chand or online questions hain jinko hum nazar andaz nahi karenge. Ahmed Ahmed Akhtar hain, wo keh rahe hain ke, well, his question is very simple. What would you choose if you were sitting across from Morpheus? <laughs> the blue pill or the red pill for the <laughs> jinko blue pill or red pill ka nahi idea unki aasani ke liye main ye uh, izafa kar dun ke jo blue pill hai that represents comfort and ignorance uh, this is <laughs> or jo red Too pill hai uh, yeah, i'd like to stay in the matrix <laughs> <laughs> no it hurts a lot <laughs> it hurts a lot i don't know i don't know but i mean yeah और हम हमाद में रानी है उनका इसी से किसी हद तक कनेक्टेड ही है जाहिर क्वेश्चन वो कह रहे हैं व्हाट इज योर ओपिनियन ऑफ मॉर्फियस मिशन टू फ्री द पीपल इन द मैट्रिक्स वेल आई मीन मॉर्फियस इज एज आई थिंक यू हैव मेंशन दैट यू आर फैसिनेटेड बाय हिज कैरेक्टर बिकॉज़ ही डज रिप्रेजेंट यू नो ही इज द सेम एज यू नो कांसेप्ट ऑफ गॉड ऑफ स्लीप एंड dreams now uh, morpheus is also uh, uh, the god figure in 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 the film as well and uh, you know trinity is the bridge that connects morpheus uh, and uh, and neo and she is also one of the so there is this idea of like uh, uh, the holy spirit uh, the holy ghost the father the, the son and the holy ghost so trinity is the ghost uh, in that sense and then she combines all three of them so morpheus is uh, as uh, on a romantic level yes what he was doing that is that that is quite fascinating uh, and i think that this is what makes his character so important and so uh, lovable in many ways uh, because he's willing to uh, sacrifice himself to uh, save uh, uh, neo so uh, yes uh, th th this is my response to that so uh, said iqbal keh rahe it is an honor to listen you thank you said akhri question hai online unless koi aur aa jaye ahmed akhtar hi hai wo keh rahe hain 
uh, your thoughts on the transition of the creators of the franchise from the Wachowski brothers to uh, Wachowski sisters? sisters. Okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, well, there is this very strong uh, uh, idea in the film as well that if you look at most of the characters, they have been presented as uh, it, it's not easy to uh, determine their gender. Uh, for example, Apox character. So there was this uh, tendency, I mean, those people who have studied uh, uh, Wachowski sisters, uh, their transition from Wachowski brothers to Wachowski sisters, uh, those who have studied this, they do argue this, that it was quite evident even in the first part, but they were, you know, quite uncertain uh, about their own identity. So uh, this is, uh, and this is like, this is evident. If you look at, there are many uh, scenes in the film where uh, Trinity and uh, Neo are standing uh, close to each other and it's not easy to differentiate between them uh, on, the, on the basis of their uh, facial features and the way, you know, they are, they are presented there. So uh, I think that this was, uh, they themselves were under this, uh, they were undergoing this idea of uh, reconciling with their closet identity. So, yeah, so there is this, uh, eventually they decided to change their uh, gender and, you know, they, they start, decided to live as women. So, yeah. I want to ask a question uh, related to movies and these big philosophical questions. Like, uh, in a movie which is of uh, two, two and a half hours, let's say, uh, and this question of reality is eternal question. Uh, how much of justice could be done to the question in this short duration, keeping the view uh, of entertainment and other stuff, like you need to do the business and all the things that come with movie making. So, wh what do you say about it? Katre me dajla dikhai na de, aur juz me kul. So, you don't have to live forever to understand the world. So, I mean, you know, the world can be explained in one verse. Uh, two and a half hour is too long a time. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if you are interested in these shorter films, uh, which are like, dura the duration is around seven minutes. So uh, two and a half hours is too long a time. It's, it's too long a time uh, to present, uh, you know, or to um, uh, engage with these questions. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, again, uh, this was uh, Ghalib, and then there was this Blake who said that, you know, uh, to, see an, uh, to see eternity in an hour. So there is, you can, you can, uh, it, it is quite possible. This is what, that uh, a film can engage with larger than life questions uh, within the scope, whatever scope it has set for itself. So it can do that. And secondly, um, as you, most people would say that uh, technology and social media is taking us away from the reality, uh, or is it creating the new reality that, uh, what do you say about uh, Well, I mean, that is certainly a new reality, whether we like it or not. Uh, this is a new reality, and there is like the, the concept of an uh, ideal young man or the concept of an ideal young woman or the concept of beauty that is being redefined, but all those filters which are available on Insta, on all these different platforms. So this is going to be our new reality. Yes, I would. Uh, uh, so how we as older people or, you know, uh, as older cynical people <laughs> negotiate with it, that is uh, our problem. But, you know, for the next generation, this is going, to, this is their reality. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>